Just days ago, the skies above Sicily twisted with hundreds of perfect smoke rings from Mount Etna's newest crater, startling even the world's top scientists and blanketing the city in ash. The record-breaking spectacle is real, and experts say these rings may be the most prolific on Earth. But why did it happen now? And how could a single volcanic vent trigger such an event? The answer begins on the night of April 2nd, 2024. Mount Etna rises above the eastern coast of Sicily, its slopes stretching nearly 40 kilometers from summit to sea. On the evening of April 2nd, 2024, attention turned to a single unassuming spot on the volcano's southeast crater. At 8.16 p.m. local time, Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology raised Etna's aviation color code to yellow, signaling heightened summit activity. Just 14 minutes later, that warning escalated to orange, an alert to pilots and air traffic controllers that something unusual was unfolding at the summit's rim. The source was a new vent no wider than a small car, positioned low on the southeast crater floor. Unlike the roaring fountains or rivers of lava that have defined Etna's most dramatic moments, this opening produced only short, rhythmic gas puffs. Yet these bursts carried enough force to send perfect, near-perfect, ghostly rings of vapor spiraling into the dusk sky. Each ring traced the shape of the vent itself, a near-perfect circle sharply defined against the fading light. Etna's summit is a complex of overlapping craters, but this event belonged to the southeast cone, a restless feature that has grown rapidly over the past two decades. The new vent sat within a landscape already scarred by recent eruptions, its position mapped by INGV volcanologists using GPS and drone surveys. Its geometry proved essential, a smooth circular orifice, neither blocked nor jagged, that allowed gases to escape in quick, concentrated pulses. For air traffic officials in Catania, the shift to orange required immediate action. Flight paths were reviewed and monitoring intensified, but the initial emissions carried little ash, only vapor and trace volcanic gases. On the ground, residents in Nicolosi and Zafirana Etnea watched as the rings rose in silent procession, each drifting higher before fading into the night. The timing could not have been more precise. Early April in Sicily brings cool, stable air, creating ideal conditions for vapor to condense and hold its shape. The vent's activity, recorded by seismic sensors and high-speed cameras, began almost exactly as the sun set, making the spectacle visible for miles around. Within hours, social media filled with images the yield with images and videos, but the scientific response was just as swift. INGV teams logged the event, correlating webcam footage with seismic and infrasound data. The vent's location and geometry were documented in detail as experts realized they were witnessing one of the most concentrated displays of volcanic vortex rings in living memory. This single vent, no larger than a city manhole, was now the focal point for both scientific investigation and public fascination. Its precise position on the southeast crater, the timing of its opening, and the geometry of its rim would all prove vital to understanding how Mount Etna launched its latest record-breaking show, a perfect volcanic ring begins its journey deep inside the mountain, where gas builds up beneath the surface. In Etna's case, the magma column acts like a giant bottle of soda, trapping pockets of gas under immense pressure. When these pockets, called gas slugs, rise through the conduit, they push upward until they reach the vent. A narrow circular opening carved by previous eruptions. The moment a slug bursts free, it shoots a pulse of hot gases straight into the air. The vent's smooth, round edges force the escaping vapor to curl back on itself, spinning into a donut-shaped vortex. This is not smoke in the usual sense. The rings are mostly water vapor, invisible at first, but as the hot gas rushes out and meets the cool Sicilian air, it condenses instantly. 
That makes the ring's visible white, ghostly circles that float above the crater. Mixed in are traces of sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide, both common volcanic gases. But it is the water vapor that dominates, sometimes making up more than 80% of the ring's mass. The process is all about speed and shape. The gas slug must burst out fast enough to create a sharp pressure pulse. Scientists estimate at least 40 kilopascals, about 400 times the pressure of a car tire. At the same time, the vent has to be just right, not too jagged, not too wide, and perfectly round. If the opening is rough or blocked, the ring will not form. Instead, the gas escapes as a shapeless cloud lost to the wind. Laboratory experiments help explain the magic. By firing gas through a circular nozzle with a piston, researchers can recreate the same effect on a small scale. The key is the ratio between the length of the gas pulse and the diameter of the nozzle. Too short, and there is no ring. Too long, and the vortex collapses. With the right balance, a stable ring forms and glides forward, just like the one seen over Etna's summit. Each ring's size matches the vent that created it, sometimes stretching several meters across. Because the hot vapor is lighter than the surrounding air, the rings rise, spinning as they go, until turbulence finally tears them apart. Under the right conditions, a single ring can last for minutes, drifting high above the crater before fading into the sky. What looks like a fleeting trick is, at its core, a simple dance of pressure, geometry, and condensation, a natural process that turns volcanic breath into a spectacle of perfect circles. Inside research labs across Europe, scientists have spent years trying to capture the secrets of volcanic vortex rings. On polished workbenches, piston rigs fire sharp bursts of gas through nozzles no wider than a coin. Each trial is recorded in slow motion and the resulting smoke rings are measured for size, speed, and stability. The goal is precision. Models must predict not just if a ring will form, but how long it will last, how far it will travel, and why some collapse while others rise untouched for minutes. Computational Fluid Dynamics, CFD, takes the experiments further. Here, supercomputers simulate the chaos inside Etna's vent tracking every swirl of vapor as it escapes into the open air. Change the vent from perfectly round to slightly jagged, and the model shows the ring unraveling before it ever leaves the nozzle. Adjust the exit velocity, or the length of the gas pulse, and the results shift again. One parameter stands out, the stroke ratio, the length of the gas slug compared to the vent's diameter. Too short, and no ring forms. Too long, and the vortex tears itself apart. Only when the ratio falls within a narrow window does the simulation match what is seen above Etna's summit. Yet for all their detail, these models have limits. Laboratory rings are smaller, the air is still, and the scale is nothing like a real volcano. CFD can predict the moment a ring forms, but it struggles to account for wind, turbulence, or the subtle changes in vent shape caused by a single rock falling loose. Field data from Etna, collected with high-speed cameras, pressure sensors, and gas analyzers, reveal patterns the models cannot always explain. Perfect circles one day, ragged shapes the next. Each new ring from the volcano is a test the models must pass, and each failure points to the need for more sensors, more observations, and more time spent at the crater's edge. Long before high-speed cameras and seismic sensors tracked every pulse from Etna's summit, the people living on its slopes watched the volcano's rings with a mix of awi and superstition. The earliest written account dates back to 1724, when a Sicilian priest described perfect circles of vapor rising from the crater, drifting like halos above the mountain. Over the centuries, shepherds, farmers, and travelers gave the phenomenon names of their own, likening the rings to the breath of giants, or the smoke signals of ancient gods. 
modern volcanologists have kept that fascination alive, but with new tools and a scientific lens. Boris Benke, a senior researcher at Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, has spent decades documenting Etna's every move. In his notebooks, the year 2000 stands out with more than 5,000 rings counted in a single year, a record unmatched by any other volcano on Earth. Behanke calls Etna the Lady of the Rings, a nickname picked up by local guides who lead visitors to the crater's edge. For them, the rings are more than a scientific curiosity. They are a living symbol of the volcano's personality, a reminder that Etna is always communicating even in silence. Simona Scolo, another INGV expert, points out that each generation finds its own meaning in the rings. In the past, they were omens or portents. Today, they are a draw for tourists and a focus for scientific study. Guides from Nicolosi and Zafirana Etnea recall nights when dozens of rings floated above the summit, each one greeted with cheers from crowds gathered on the lower slopes. Social media has turned these displays into global events, but the sense of wonder is unchanged from centuries ago. Etna's rings are woven into the culture of Eastern Sicily, passed down in stories and celebrated in local festivals. What was once a mystery glimpsed by a few now belongs to the world, yet the volcano's message, written in circles of vapor, remains as enigmatic as ever. Every pulse from Etna's new vent triggers a familiar routine among the scientists at the INGV Observatory. On a normal day, their screens fill with real-time graphs, seismic signals, infrasound, gas concentrations, each spike hinting at what is happening 1,000 meters above. The recent surge in vapor rings brought no alarms, only careful attention. For volcanologists, the sight of so many rings is more than a spectacle. It is a quiet reassurance that the volcano is releasing pressure in a controlled way. Each ring marks a burst of gas that might otherwise have built up inside the mountain, reducing the risk of sudden, violent eruptions. This form of degassing is well understood. The vapor rings are made almost entirely of water, with smaller amounts of sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. When these gases escape steadily, they carry away energy and pressure that could otherwise drive explosive events. The INGV team tracks these emissions closely, comparing them to patterns from past years. While the vent's activity is unusual for its frequency and precision, the underlying process is familiar. No sudden ash plumes, no lava fountains, no tremors strong enough to rattle windows in the villages below. Daily life around Etna continues much as before. Farmers tend their fields on the lower slopes, and the lights of Catania shine undisturbed at night. Air traffic controllers at the city's airport keep watch, but the vapor rings themselves pose no direct threat to flight paths. The main concern is always ash, which can close runways and ground planes within minutes. During this episode, the emissions have been almost entirely vapor, leaving the skies clear for travel. Tourists gather on the mountain's flanks, cameras ready, while local guides share stories of past eruptions and the science behind the spectacle. For the INGV staff, vigilance never fades. Instruments are checked, data reviewed, and emergency plans kept ready. But the current display, dozens to hundreds of rings each day, signals a volcano breathing, not threatening. In this moment, the mountain's message is clear, pressure released, hazard low, and the guardians of Etna calmly watching for any sign that the rhythm might change. On the slopes of Mount Etna, every pulse from the vent triggers a cascade of measurements. High-speed webcams perched on metal towers and linked to the INGV observatory capture each vapor ring as it bursts into the twilight. At the same instant, seismic sensors embedded in the volcanic rock register a sharp jolt a pressure wave racing outward from the vent. When researchers overlay these records, a pattern emerges. Every visible ring on camera matches a spike in the seismic trace. 
the two signals locked in perfect step. Frame by frame, the cameras reveal the rings, leaving the vent at astonishing speed. Calculations based on video timestamps and known distances show exit velocities reaching tens of meters per second. The rings expand as they rise, their diameters mirroring the vent's circular outline sometimes stretching to several meters across before fading into the sky. Each vapor ring is not just a visual marvel, but a measurable event. Its journey tracked from the first seismic blip to the final wisp of, con of condensation. This synchronized data is more than a technical achievement. It is direct evidence that the vapor rings are born in the instant of overpressure release not from slow leaks or surface winds. The real-time link between the seismic pulse and the camera image proves that the models hold up in the field. A single sharp burst of gas, shaped by the vent and propelled at high speed, is all it takes to launch a perfect, perfect ring. For scientists, this is the closest they can get to watching the volcano's heartbeat. Each ring a visible sign of the forces moving deep below the summit. Across the INGV observatory, telemetry dashboards flicker with live data pulled from sensors scattered along Etna's slopes. Every pressure spike, every seismic blip, every vapor pulse is logged in real time. When the new vent opened in April 2024, the system captured each ring's birth, time-stamped, cross-referenced, and instantly available to both scientists and civil protection agencies. Algorithms sort through the noise, flagging anomalies and tracking the frequency of gas puffs. A sudden change in the rhythm, a spike in sulfur dioxide, or a drop in exit velocity can trigger alerts that ripple out to aviation authorities and local officials within seconds. This network draws on decades of upgrades. Automated analysis now links high-speed webcam footage with seismic and infrasound signals. So when a ring appears, its source event is already mapped and categorized. The data feeds directly into aviation advisories for Catania Airport. If ash begins to mix with vapor, the system can recommend flight path adjustments before a single plane takes off. During the current episode, the clear separation between vapor and ash has kept the risk low, but the tools remain ready for any shift in behavior. Predictive models use these streams to look ahead. By matching current patterns with archives from previous years, scientists can estimate how long the vent might stay active, whether ring frequency signals a stable conduit, or if deeper unrest is brewing. The result is a kind of volcanic early warning, built not just on theory, but on a continuous record of Etna's every breath. For the communities below and the skies above, this vigilance is as much a part of the volcano's rhythm as the rings themselves. Mount Etna's smoke rings are more than a spectacle. They are a living signal from Earth's most active volcano. As scientists continue to track its daily outbursts, the boundary between wonder and warning grows ever thinner. Nature's messages can be beautiful, but they're never meaningless. The next ring could be a reminder of just how dynamic and unpredictable our world remains. What do you see in the sky above Etna?